Hello, I'm Charles Brock and I'm a Highland Woodworker. I just love coming to Highland Woodworking in Atlanta, Georgia. It's where I get all my fine woodworking tools and a great woodworking education. Let me show you what we've got on the big show today. This time on the Highland Woodworker. This is one of the pieces of equipment that I'm most interested in. A moving segment on the stationary tools you might want to focus on when setting up a workshop. Stop block and roll. Fine Woodworking's Tom McKenna shows us some safer ways to cross cut at your table saw. Then spend a moment with master woodworker Pat Matranga. I thought, oh, I always wanted to try that. I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. How she went from singing on stages around the world to giving it all up for a career in woodworking. These stories and more this time on the Highland Woodworker. I have a friend coming over who wants to be a woodworker. He has the same question that all of us had at one point. How do I get started? What do I need? Hello, Monty Montgomery. Hey, how are you today, Chuck? I'm great. Thank you for having me over here. Well, I've been in your shoes. Now, where do I go? What do I need? Uh, I want to kind of walk you around a little bit and show you some things. But first, the question is, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to be able to do? Well, build? I'm not real sure. Uh, possibly some turning, maybe some boxes. Uh, just start out small. I guess that you would call it a generalist. Yeah, it, you are going to be a generalist first and then see what uh, catches on fire with you. Yes. Yeah, well, let's take a walk okay. around and sure. I'll show you what, what I think. Wonderful. Well, Monty, this is all about wood. But to build any project, you have to have reference points, and usually you have to make the board square. Okay. And so almost every project starts out at a joiner. Okay. And I would take, I'd want to flatten one side, and I can run it across the joiner, and I can make this side flat, and then... I can create an edge that's oh, 90 degrees. So you're basically squaring it up. That's right. And uh, there's a system called uh, four square, yeah. where we have four square sides. And that's how you usually make, uh, start a project, okay. and find your reference points. I understand. Okay. And so it starts at the joiner. Now, the joiner may not be sexy, but it's the basis okay. for almost everything for a generalist. Okay. Well, after you joint a face of the board and create an edge that's 90 degrees to that face, then uh, you make a little mark on it, which is kind of a carpenter's mark, shows that that's 90 degrees. Then you want to be able to thickness it uh, okay. so that each side is parallel. This is a planer. Okay. Now, there are a lot of different planers out there. Okay. This, this is just a big old planer. It'll do 15 inches. And, uh, and, and it's quite powerful. So, but you gotta have a plan. Well, Monty, you've got to have a way to cut the wood into uh, the shapes that you wanna cut it mm -hmm. into, the, the widths and the lengths and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to do that with just a, a great deal of control and to be able to cut on paper thin knife lines, mm -hmm. uh, you need a, a table saw. This one is uh, three horsepower and uh, you can rip boards to width uh -huh. using this saw and you can also cross cut on it. Uh -huh. Now cross cutting is when you cut across the grain and uh, I use for most of my cross cutting when I want to be just dead on. Uh, I use a, a cutoff mm -hmm. sled like this or a crosscut sled and I can put blocks on here so that I can uh, repeat a cut over and over right. again. Right. Uh, and this one's kind of outfitted with something interesting and that I've got some headlights here great. That, uh, so I can great. see That's the, a great the little idea. cut lines. Great idea. Well, Monty, you've got to be able to crosscut uh, big pieces of lumber mm -hmm. Before you take it through the process I've shown you with the, the joiner and, and the planer and the table saw, uh, I don't use this for extremely accurate work, 
just to kind of break it down. Okay. Uh, but uh, all this is is a, a sliding uh, miter saw that you can actually pivot from 90 degrees, okay. uh, you know, all the way uh, to here, let's see, what is it, 65 degrees and the other way too. Um, but I try to leave it most of the time at, at 90 degrees, get just a fairly good square cut. And you crank it up and you can just push it across the board and you can cut it to length. Wow. Just make okay. a mark with a pencil. Great. But it's one of those kind of rougher tools that uh, you just have to have in a shop. I to, see, to just break to break down. your boards down to where you can fine cut them then. That's right. Where you're going to, okay. Well, let's say that you want to cut some curves. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like a bandsaw. Yeah. I, I use a bandsaw just a, a lot in my work because the chairs have lots of curves. Um, it doesn't need to be as big as this bandsaw. Uh -huh. But uh, to get started, uh, you need a little bit of power. I would say it, something one and a half horsepower or more. This happens to be three horsepower. And not only can you cut curves, you can stand the board up and you can raise the guides up. And if you have enough room this ah, way. I see. So that's really important to make sure you've got enough room. There. Yeah, then yeah. Uh, you can do what uh, we call resawing. Uh -huh. And you can make two boards out of it. Open it up, and as pretty as this board is, if you open it up uh, and place them next to each mm -hmm. other, then you've got a beautiful book match. Uh -huh. So uh, that's something very valuable. Bandsaw is, is great for adding those curves and those, those flourishes. Okay. Chuck, this is one of the pieces of equipment that I'm most interested in, uh, the lathe. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Sure. Uh, a lathe gives you a, a whole new world of things to explore in woodworking. Mm -hmm. Not only can you, you turn <clears throat> spindles mm -hmm. uh, for legs, for tables, or chairs, or, or whatever, uh, but you can turn bowls. There, there's just an, a, wow. an enormous amount of things you can do with it. And of course, the idea is uh, the piece of wood goes round and round, and you use a, uh, a, a tool, and you impart a shape. Uh -huh. You could spend a whole lifetime uh, becoming a, a, a wood turner and never run out of, of various projects that you could do. If you want to form an edge uh, for a piece of molding that has all the little curves and stuff, mm -hmm. like even crown molding, okay. you can do that with a piece of equipment like this. This router, okay. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's a router that's turned upside down at a table and you can attach a fence and you okay. can just push it right along beside it. Or you can do some freehand routing with a starter pin like this. And this is set up right here to, uh, to turn and form a rabbit uh, in the edge of, a, right. uh, of something. So it's a kind of joinery that you'd be creating so you can put two things together. But then again, there's a whole world of routing done with handheld routers. So uh, this is not a piece of stationary equipment like the others that I have shown you. Uh, this is one of those pieces where you actually take the tool to the board. Okay. Instead of taking the board to the tool. Mm -hmm. Well, you've always got a situation where you need to drill some holes for screws or mm -hmm. drill a hole that becomes a, a mortise. Uh, this is just a handheld drill okay. where you have to take the drill to the work. And many times it's not as accurate as you right. would like for it to right. be. But this adds accuracy because you can use the uh, drill press table okay. as a reference point and it also articulates and you can drill a hole to the depth that you yeah. need to, to drill it to. So a drill press is a great stationary tool and uh, it comes in various sizes. You can even get one that sits on top of a bench. Uh, I used one of those for, for years before I got this one. But it's a, a great addition to any generalist shop. Chuck, thank you for having me today. I appreciate you showing me all the tools. I know I'm going to need a joiner, uh, planer, and table saw. 
And uh, the lathe I really did like. Uh, thank you for showing me those stationary tools. Well, those things will help you get started. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to decide on your budget and, and uh, what kind of work you want to do. It's almost always the salient question. Okay. Yeah. But there are some other things, too, you need to consider, like air filtration mm. uh, and dust collection, because those things, the dust can be a carcinogen. Uh, it can make your life right. miserable. So you've got to have a way to control that in your shop right. so you can be healthy. Okay. It, it, very important. Safety and, and health are always most important. Right. But then there's some things that we haven't talked about, like the workbench. Uh, it's a reference for your work, and it holds your work. And then there's the whole world of hand tools. So you might stop by after you get started. We'll talk about how to make a hybrid shop. Oh, I'd love that. I love that. Pretty soon you'll find yourself to be an excellent furniture maker. Chuck, thank you so much for having me today. Oh, thank you. Ed Sin, what's in the Highland Woodworking Toolbox today? Sharpening, sharpening with the Tormac, and uh, you know how important it is to have sharp tools to uh, let your woodworking get to the place where you want it to get. You can't do it without sharp tools. Well, let's see how you can get them sharp. Well, Tormac is a water-cooled unit, and it's a tool that you don't ever have to worry about drawing the temper out of your quality tool steel because it runs so cool with a water-bathed stone. It has a great jig system that allows you to run jigs to hold your tools at a consistent angle repeatable and so you get a consistent bevel every time. It's pretty simple. This is the edge tool. And you clamp it in there. And so you've got water in here? Uh, yep, uh, water bath. It's a nice and water tray that you can lower down, remove to go uh, take all the water, pour the water out when you're done. It also has a nice uh, magnet right here so as the filings from the metal that you're grinding you can pull this away and scrape out uh, any of the debris from the tray while you're cleaning it. This wheel is grinding at about 220 grit and when I get to a place where I'm Happy with the, with the grind, I'm going to dress the wheel with the stone grater that Tormek includes for this unit. And it'll put it at about a thousand grit. And I can feel the back and feel that I have a burr all the way across. Takes just the outside circumference of the wheel ever so slightly. And just for about 30 seconds. So now you're just polishing that out. Yeah, a little bit finer scratch pattern. So now, Chuck, we've taken the universal support bar and put it in uh, this configuration in order to have it uh, put the edge towards the leather wheel. I'll get that lined up and set up. There's a little stropping paste that we can put on the wheel. So we'll have a little bit of wire burr. I'll come across on the back of the stone or on the stropping wheel just a little bit. Pull straight back. I'm not trying to raise this in otherwise I'd roll over that edge. Right. I think the T8 is probably going to be the sharpening answer for lots of shops. It, it's a great answer and it'll do just about every tool in your shop. Coming up. Smart guide to cross cutting. Tom McKenna has the finer points. And I wasn't allowed to take shop. They forced us into home ec. Meet one of the most prolific women in woodworking. A moment with Pat Matranga. Stay with us. You're watching The Highland Woodworker. I'm just an average, down-to-earth woodworker. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably about a 5. But one place I score a perfect 10 is right here, and I plan on keeping all 10. That's why I have a saw stop table saw. And there's more. Plenty of power, superior dust collection, and absolute accuracy. These features have made it the best-selling cabinet saw in America. 
Let Highland Woodworking help you put a saw stop in your shop. Highland Woodworking stocks a wide selection of Rikon power tools known for their innovative design and rugged durability. Highland has sold thousands of Rikon's industry-leading bandsaws with sizes to fit every woodworking need, from the compact affordable 10-inch model to competitively priced 14 and 18-inch models. Shop us also for Rikon's reliable planers, lathes, and professional low-speed grinder, all with an exceptional five-year warranty. Rikon. Power Tools. Woodworkers count on American-made forest saw blades for smooth, quiet cuts every time, without splintering, scratching, or tear-outs. The famous Woodworker 2 is the all-purpose combination blade, but for special cuts, Woodworker 2s are available for cutting dovetails, for flat bottom joinery, a 30-tooth blade is perfect for ripping, a 48-tooth blade for superior cross cuts, and a finger joint blade set. There is a perfect forest Woodworker 2 for every table saw cut. Highland Woodworking has been a leader in woodworking education for more than 30 years. They offer all kinds of woodworking classes year-round, ranging from how to hand cut dovetails and mortises to how to sharpen a plane or a chisel, how to build a cabinet, a chair, or a bookcase, or how to turn a wooden bowl. There are classes on wood finishing, French polishing, and even antique furniture restoration. For a list of upcoming classes that may interest you, just look in their catalog or go to highlandwoodworking.com. One of the cardinal safety rules of using the table saw is you never want to use the rip fence as a stop block when you're cross cutting. What happens is as you push the workpiece into the blade, that off cut can get trapped between the blade and the fence and shoot right back at you. Not a good thing. The safest way to make a cross cut using your miter gauge is to grab a stop block and a clamp and clamp into your rip fence. And what that does is it gives the offcut clearance as you pass through the blade. Here's a workshop tip submitted by reader Robert Gunn. And Robert came up with a really clever stop block that's just a simple block of wood with rare earth magnets embedded in one end. And all he does is he puts it right on the table and he's ready to cross cut. No clamping required. Make the block width a simple number, like two inches in this case. And that makes the math much easier. And you have to make sure that it's perfectly square. This way you can still use the ruler on the rip fence without measuring, but you have to remember to do some simple math. Now Robert cleverly locates the magnets close to one edge of the stop block. And what that does is if you have a cut made with the fence close to the miter slot, it allows you to flip the block so you can get adhesion to the table. What's even better about this stop block is when you're done, 
You can just slap it on the side of your cabinet saw and you'll never lose it. Thanks for the great tip, Robert. His workshop tip appears in issue 262 of Fine Woodworking Magazine. As the wood turns, a moment with master woodworker Pat Matranga. You're watching The Highland Woodworker. Whiteside Machine Company has been in business for over 30 years providing customers with quality American-made router bits. Fine Woodworking Magazine has declared Whiteside router bits best overall and best value when compared against 17 other brands. No matter the router application, they have the type and profile of carbide router bit you need. When you put a Whiteside router bit to work in your shop, it is guaranteed to make you smile. For 35 years, Lee has manufactured the world's best joinery jigs. From our award-winning dovetail jigs and mortise and tenon jigs, to newer innovations like router table jigs. Easily add strong, beautiful joinery to your woodworking pieces, like half-blind dovetails, box joints, mortise and tenon joints, and through dovetails. Lee, simply the easiest and most versatile router joinery jigs. Are your tools Tormac sharp? Tormac, consistent, reliable, and razor sharp. Tormac, sharpening innovation. Moment with a Master is brought to you by Highland Woodworking. Fine tools since 1978. Let Highland's legendary wood slicer resaw blade help make it easy for you to get great results sawing thick lumber into thinner boards. The wood slicer is designed to cut much faster, smoother, and quieter than ordinary bandsaw blades. You'll be amazed at how smooth a surface you'll get with a wood slicer. Its variable tooth pattern greatly reduces noise and vibration. Order a wood slicer from Highland Woodworking for your bandsaw today. Now sit back and be inspired with our moment with a master. When it comes to thinking up that next creative wood turning project, Pat Matranga's wheels are always in motion. I had an older brother, Mike, who would come home with these really neat wood turned salad bowls and candlesticks and I was like, wow, that looks like a great thing to try and I wasn't allowed to take shop. Mm -hmm. They forced us into home ec, and uh, that really bothered me, but um, I couldn't do anything about it. So after college, I was working, and I got a mailing about a night class at a technical college mm -hmm. in woodworking. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, I always wanted to try that. I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. And um, so I remember um, the first time I turned, it was a thin platter about 10, 11 inches out of African black limba. Oh, wow. And it was about an eighth of an inch all the way. I don't know how I did it. Uh, very slowly. Uh, yeah. There you <laughs> very go. Slowly. Yeah. yeah. But um, I immediately fell in love with wood turning the first mm -hmm. time I got to try it. Before Pat's career in wood turning, she did what most aspiring woodworkers do, become a singing sensation, of course. I moved to Nashville in 1990 and I hit it lucky. I was booked to go to Japan. I got to record my album and sell all the merchandise over there and kind of live that dream. I'd go for three months at a time. So I was back home and I was in a gift shop mm -hmm. and I saw this wonderful woodwork in there. Mm -hmm. And I said to the owner, I said, wow, this stuff is really wonderful. And uh, she said, well, there's a wood turning club in town. I said, really? Uh -huh. So I, I made the call that day. Yeah. And I started going right away and um, studying wood turning, um, 
through people coming through, demonstrating in the library and everything. Um, and then at some point, I turned down my last offer to go to Japan. When I turned down that job, I, I jumped into this, no business training. I didn't hardly know how to make anything at that point. All mm -hmm. I knew is I love wood turning. Yeah. And I still do today. Her masterful turning and carving creations are produced on a small scale, but she found out quickly that's what big businesses want. I knew I like to make stuff. I got to find somewhere to sell this stuff. My house is going to fill up with that's stuff. That's right, yeah. So luckily, uh, my brain works almost simultaneously with who might want to own this. And, um, and so I learned as the years went on kind of different niches. That, uh, and, and businesses have to give a lot of gifts. And so <clears throat> I liked to do sculpture. I just kind of mm -hmm. happened upon that. Um, and then I can engrave an award recipient on there, and then they're happy they have a sculpture. I call them sculptural awards. Mm -hmm. I get to do my sculpture, and I've got a way to, to move them out of the house. Well, Pat. I know I shouldn't get too excited about high heel shoes, but uh, this is so different that it really got my attention. And there's a lot to this. Uh, how about your bending here? This is very interesting. Yeah, well, I um, came upon some wood that's called compressed wood, and it looks like any other board. Um, it comes in large boards, um, and this is just cut down a little bit. But what happens is they use hydraulic presses and actually compress the wood fibers like this. And uh, so it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, really moisture content or anything like in traditional bending. But it makes it easier to then bend and let those fibers pull back out. So um, when, I, when I discovered compressed wood, it just opened up so many possibilities. One day I had one like laying horizontal on the ground, it was in some kind of finishing process, and I, I thought, you know, that kind of, it just reminded me of a high heel shoe. And so then I thought, I want to make a high heel shoe. So um, that's, that was the start of this. Pat's shoe designs range from colorful to downright shocking. But it's those numerous familiar wood turning projects that are the heart and soul of her unique business. There was a gentleman that you mentioned to me that was kind of your inspiration and, and mentor that oh, helped yes. you kind of make the transition from I want to be to I am. Yeah. Uh, you know, tell tell yeah. me about that. Well, I met him. He was one of the founding members of the Tennessee Association of Wood Turners. His name was Burton Fielder. He was many years older than me. He was an older gentleman. And he, he took me under his wing and taught me the basics. He taught me how to use the chainsaw. And it's really quite remarkable that, you know, a man of his generation would reach out and help me. Well, a spear, I understand, is one of the hardest things to turn. And yours are just beautiful. And they kind of take the place of a fidget. It's a artful fidget. This is this is just really great. And you're going to show us how you do it. Yeah, I'm going to give you a few tips on it. Wow. Um, so far I just put a piece of wood on the lathe and just trued it up. Um, and then what you do is take your calipers and measure the diameter and then get the length the same. That's your starting point. And that's about all the measuring I do. We're done measuring now. <laughs> then um, I take my pencil and I just, you know, kind of eyeball the middle. If you, if you want to be more exact, you can get out your ruler. And I, I mark it off into four sections. And then I try to make the same angle on both ends. up to that line there. Then I go to the second mark and I do about half of that angle like that. And now you're going to go from this line to the edge and just try to get 
keep your curve moving all the time, ever so slightly. Now we're going to go down the other side. I just take my time and I move around. So it's not that important to get it perfect right now. Just kind of roughing it out. Come back with a little sheer cut at some of the high places. Well, that sheer cut is really nice. Yeah, it's a handy, handy way to just kind of look up there and see, it looks pretty good. But I think uh, for this axis, that's good enough. I've just changed this 90 degrees now. That's why it's important to have your mark. It's the only time I ever have the flute up. It, it works nice to get this little part here. It's very carefully, because it's just a jam chuck now with a little vacuum on it, too. And this part is called turning off the ghost. You can just see where it's not perfectly round. There's a little bit of ghost here. And it's nice to be able to take a very light cut. Sometimes people want to see how much wood you can hog off. Well, this is not the time. <laughs> Going over it real light. Feels good. A little vibration here. So, you know, you can feel more than you can see at this point. So that's doing pretty well. That so looks, then, looks great. Yeah, you just look at the curve here, and uh, I can't feel anything. Sometimes you don't look, and you just you just feel, and sometimes you'll feel something that you can't see. But I, I'm pretty pleased with that. And then um, I'm going to mark the center here, and we won't take the time, but you can put it on the third axis, and you get just a little bit more ghost from this area that I can't get to right now. And then you got yourself a brand new baby sphere. Well, Pat, besides all of the beautiful uh, things that you have turned and sculpted, uh, what would you like your legacy to be? How would you like to be remembered? Well, I hope my story might make a small dent in prescribed gender roles so that people can pursue their interests, you know, and, and uh, feel free to pursue their interests and not, you know, I, I remembered for a long time where I was not able to take shop class and that's kind of too bad. I was wondering, man, if I, if I would have started wood turning then I'd be doing it for 46 years now. Wow. And uh, wow. that'd be quite different from 24 years. But, um, so hopefully people, you know, now are, you know, more free to be able to pursue whatever it is, both men and women, whatever it is they're interested in, I hope that they can go for it. Um, and then as a production turner, I literally have tens of thousands of items out there scattered everywhere, as well as, you know, um, thousands of sculptures. The good thing about wood is it'll last for generations, as you know. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be around a long time after I'm long gone. So I just hope that, that my work out there will continue to, to be used and, and, and make people happy. Improve your woodworking experience. Sign up for Wood News Online, a monthly newsletter showcasing the latest news, tips, and classes Highland Woodworking has to offer. By signing up, you'll receive the latest episode of the Highland Woodworker, special store promotions, and Wood News Online delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up today. That's all the time we have for the show today, but Check us out on social media and come back to see us next time on The Highland Woodworker.